So once we have talked about array, I mean, basically we, we have talked about why do we need array and how to create an array. Let's do something more with array now. In fact, in the previous video, we have seen how to create the array and then how to print the values. Now in this video, let's try to see if we can find a better way of printing this value. See what is happening now is, let's say, I mean, of course we know the length of this array here, right? Which is four. Uh, it can also be five or any numbers I mentioned before, right? It can be 100, 200 or whatever size you want to mention. And you can insert the value. Now, before I do anything else, I just want to show you one more thing. What if the value of uh, the size of array is six and you are assigning only four values here? Now, in that case, the other indexes will also have some values, right? Let's see, I just want to see what are those values before we continue. So compile and run. You can see we got the values, but then the last two values are zero. Remember, we have talked about this. By default, the values for the array or integer array will be uh, zero. And that's what is happening here. And now what I want to do is I want to uh, see if I can get this value. See, the thing is why I should know the length of the array. It might also lead to errors. Example, if I say seven here by mistake, and if I try to fetch the value, see, this is where it will give you an exception. Now, till this point, we have not talked about exception. Uh, we have a separate topic. What are exceptions? At this point, just remember, exceptions are runtime errors. Okay, so the errors which comes in runtime. At compile time, there's no problem. When you compile this code, it will not uh, blame you, it will not shout, but the moment you run this code, it will say, hey, something is wrong here. So that's exception. Now, what is the problem? The problem is we have six values. Index number star starts with zero, it ends at five, not at six. And here it says index six is out of bounds. So basically we are trying to go beyond the limit, okay? So how do we solve this problem? So instead of specifying the number hard-coded values, we can do one thing. You know, this arrays, they have a property called length. So we can simply use this length as a variable or a property, which will show, which will tell us what's the actual length of the array so that you will not make any mistake. The only thing you have to remember is you have to put that, you have to make sure that it's less than, not greater than, okay? And I will, I will clear this, I will say compile and run. You can see we got the values and there's no problem. The only thing is the size is six and then we are printing only, we are assigning only four values. Let me go back to four values and you can see we got four values here. Now this is one of the good addition in terms of the property which you can use. So that's about length here. Now what we can do is, uh, let's say if I want to have a string array, or maybe I, I, let me create an array of student. Can we do that? Uh, so remember one thing. So if I create a student here, and of course I can create one object, I can create multiple objects here. And let's say I have a integer, I have a student which has some values. So let's say integer roll number, okay, and a string name and int marks. Of course, not, not a good way to uh, maintain the records. We don't want to maintain marks, but just for the example. Okay, so we have student. And then we have these three variables, okay? Now mind you, these are instance variables because they belong to a class, not to a method. I just want to comment the entire section here. And what I will do is I will create student object. So let me create the first object. I will say student, S1 is equal to new student. And I want to assign all the values to the student. So I will say S1 dot roll number, which is one. And S1 dot name, which is let's say Naveen. And S1 dot marks, which is let's say 88. Okay, so we got the first object. Now maybe I want to create more objects. What I can do is I can just copy this code and paste and let's say three objects. So we want three objects here. And I will say this is two, this is three. And let's say rule number two, let's say this is Hirsch and marks, let's say 67. And if I say this is three, let's say this is Kiran. And let's say the marks is 97. Okay, so we got this marks here, right? And then basically I have three objects. Now I, I made one mistake here, if you can, I don't know if you have observed, but if you can see, I'm still assigning the values to S1. Don't you think it should be S2, S3? Uh, so it should be S2, S2 and S2. And there, here we have to say S3, S3 and S3. So basically we got three objects here. Now what I will do is I want to create an array of students, right? 
Uh, we have created the array of integers, but then how do we do that array of students? It's very simple. You say student, and then you have to say students because we are creating multiple students here. That's a variable name equal to. Now this students here is not one variable. It's an array. So you have to say array, and then we have to say new. Now in this case, when you say we have int in the same way here, it should be student, right? Student array of let's say three student will be having. So all these objects, you know, we got three objects here, S1, S2, and S3. They will become part of this array. Example, I can say student, students of zero is equal to S1. So the first object, the first reference is getting stored here in the first index. And likewise, we have, this is S1, S2, and this is S2, S3. So you can see we got three objects in the array. So of course you need these objects, otherwise this will not work. Now, if you are thinking at this point, we are creating three student object. No, we are not creating three student object. Most of the people have this confusion that on this line, we are creating three student object. No, we are creating an array which can hold student references. It will not create those objects by itself. You have to manually create the objects and assign to an array. Now this thing will make much more sense once we start working with databases. When you fetch data about a student, it will give you a lot of data. You can basically fetch those data in a student array. Now what's the advantage? The advantage is, let's say if you want to print all the details of a student. So what, what you can simply do is, you can use an array, which will start with zero, and i is less than equal to, okay, i is less than students dot length, which we have seen, and then i plus plus, and then here we can simply print, but how do you print the values? So we have, what you do is you have to print one value at a time. You have to say S1, because if you try to fetch the value of a student, it will give you a address format. Okay, example, let me show you something. At this point, uh, let me just comment this section and let me print the student object itself. And let's see what happens. So if I try to print the S1 value, you, you tell me what will happen, what, the, what will be the output. I mean, think about that. I will just compile this and run. You can see it is not printing the value of a student, it's printing something else. See, in the upcoming videos, we'll solve this problem. At this point, it's printing the address and we don't know what this is. So what we can do is explicitly you have to mention S1 dot name and you have to, maybe you can do a concatenation here and you can say S1 dot marks. I just, I don't want to print the roll number at this point, so I'm printing only this two. And now if you compile and run, you can see we got the student details. Okay, so can we do it here? So let me just uncomment this section. The only thing is you have to print this particular statement, cut and paste. Now the only problem is it will always refer to S1. We don't want to refer to S1, right? The student value will keep changing. So I can say students square bracket I. Right, so this value will keep changing, right? This will be S1, S2, S3 in every iteration. The same can be done here. So I can say students of i, that should make sense. And let's see if this works. Let me go back here, compile and run. You can see we got the values, right? So basically we can work with normal objects as well. Uh, before this, we have worked with integer. Of course, you can work with string as well but we just went uh, one step ahead by creating an array of students, okay? So I hope uh, you got some idea regarding how do we create an array of students and yeah, so in, in the next video, we'll try to do something else.